Hey, what's going on? It's Joe from Home Studio Corner talking about the Studio Live 24 from PreSonus. Don't mind the sound of screaming children in the background. My kids are out for summer. Send help. Okay, so they're playing with the hose. It's just water everywhere. Anyway, I want to talk about my go-to setup for when I'm tracking vocals um, that I specifically do on the Studio Live because it makes adding effects so easy. So here's here's the deal. You're hearing my voice right now through this microphone. This is, by the way, the um, the Roswell Mini K47, $300 mic. I've used it on my last several records, uh, EPs, whatever you want to call them. And uh, it's just a cool mic. Right now it's just plugged directly into the Studio Live preamp. You're hearing maybe some limiting just on the main output f- for the video. But it's, you know, it's a good sound in mic. So, um, you know, nice, clean, whatever. But if I'm going to track a vocal, it just uh, it's just not that exciting just to have a plain, dry mic. There's nothing wrong with it. But when I go to mix this song, let's say it's a rock song, like my song uh, Whitewash. Like, someone help me, someone help me whitewash. It's just boring because I can't hear it. In the mix, I'm going to add slapback delay, maybe a little bit of reverb. It's going to have stuff on it, and it feels so dry, and it just, it's just not as fun. So when I was tracking for my EP, um, Amen, which has that song Whitewash on it, um, I was actually doing it as a part of a live stream, and I was tracking it and said, you know what? I want some slapback delay and some reverb. So I'm going to show you exactly how I set that up, and it just it's just so nice. Here is my mixer, and I'm just using this one channel here. As you may recall from previous videos, um, the effects setup are over here to set up my effects mixes. So make sure I'm sending to the different effects. I'm using effects A and effects B for this. So for effect A, that's my reverb. And I'm using this vintage plate reverb, and I've got it set to long vocal plate. This is ridiculously long, way, way too long, if you ask me. But I just like to blend in a little bit of this into the vocal when I'm doing vocals, especially ballads, but even for like rock stuff. I like to hear my voice just ringing out. Call it narcissism or whatever. Here's what that sounds like. Check one, two. So it's a big, long tail. It's not super loud. Someone help me. Big, huge, long reverb, obnoxious. I love it. So that's the first thing I use. I don't like to use reverbs that sound like I'm in a bathroom. It doesn't do me any good. The next thing I like to do is set up a slapback delay. So let me turn off that reverb for a second. And let me show you how I do the slapback. As you can see, I'm just sending a little bit of the uh, vocal to the reverb send here. Now this is effects B is my setup for the slapback delay. Same thing, sending maybe a little bit more. And then here's the delay that I'm using. Again, this is on the board, no software. Like Studio One isn't even like running a session right now. You're just hearing it from the board. Um, I use the mono delay, just a simple delay. And I set it up with zero feedback, delay time of around 100 milliseconds. You just kind of play around with that number. And then make sure you roll off some lows and some highs so it sounds kind of low fi And here, here is what, is what that, that sounds, sounds like. like. If we adjust 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 down down to like 100 100 or so, so, that starts starts to feel feel pretty good. good. Anything higher higher than like 150 150 starts to sound like an eighth note delay. And I don't really want that. I want it to be just a slap back. So somewhere around 100, 110 to 100 is usually the spot. So now if I want to track a vocal, literally I have it set up to where my vocal track is always sending to these effects returns. I've got the buttons muted 99% of the time while I'm working in the studio, but when it's time to do a vocal, you better believe I'm pushing these two mute buttons to give myself some reverb and And some some slapback. Now, Now, I'm I'm feeling feeling like like I'm I'm, I'm singing at a show. show. I've got effects on there. I'm I'm singing singing in the mix, mix. Uh, and it's a lot more engaging to sing along with this. So it sounds something like this. Someone help me, someone help me whitewash this tune. It just, just, it just feels like, I mean, I always wanted to be a rock star, right? So (laughs) this makes me feel more like a rock star while I'm performing it. And that is a huge, huge piece. We, we, we're in this era last 10, 15 years or so, probably more where we're trying to get everything clean. I want to record everything clean. You don't have to record everything clean. I mean, granted, these effects aren't being recorded. I'm still recording just a dry vocal track, but kids are about to come in, but I've got these effects on my monitoring chain. So I'm listening back to some really cool effects and it puts me in a certain mood and it actually helps my performance. Now the big caveat, big thing to be careful with when you do this, if the effects are too loud, you're going to start singing off pitch. So you don't want to get so immersed in the effects that you can't really hear yourself. You'll have to go back and re-record. Trust me, I did that on my last EP. It was a little embarrassing, but I went back, 
dialed back the effects a little bit so it wasn't so loud, sang it again, worked super well. But it, it was able to, with these effects, evoke some emotion that I wasn't just going to get out of a plain, dry mic. So if you've got a studio live, or even if you've got you know, digital, just ju- you're just in the DAW, you can probably set this kind of thing up where you're hearing some slapback delay and some reverb next time you track a vocal. At least just have it there and available. Be surprised what kind of fun stuff will happen. I'm Joe from Home Studio Corner. Thanks for watching. See ya.